Hello, and welcome to another episode of our 20-minute playbook series, where each week I sit down with an elite performer from iconic founders to renowned investors and best-selling authors to dive into the ideas, habits, and tactics that got them to the top of their field, all in less than 20 minutes. I'm Daniel Scrivener, and on the show today, I'm joined by Andrew Carter, co-founder and CEO of Smallhold, which is upending the food industry by growing mushrooms in Michelin star-rated restaurants and grocery stores and through their network of on-site and macro farms. Smallhold is inverting the way food is traditionally grown and distributed. Today, 68% of all mushrooms consumed in the United States come from a single town in Pennsylvania called Kennett Square. That's 400 million pounds worth of mushrooms per year to be exact, which means that most mushrooms are transported across a vast distribution network to reach stores all around the United States. Smallhold knew there was a better way, so they spent years creating a proprietary set of technologies that could allow them to grow mushrooms in an incredibly small footprint. Their cases, which are their on-site farms, are about the size of a small standing cabinet. The first Smallhold on-site farms went up in restaurants around New York, which was followed by on-site farms at grocery stores, including central market stores all across Texas, where their on-site farms sit right next to where the mushrooms are sold in the grocery aisle. Smallhold is an incredible example of what the future of food looks like, and they're just getting started. In this episode, Andrew shares why everyone should watch the mushroom-focused Netflix documentary Fantastic Fungi, why he recommends the book Entangled Life for anyone who wants to learn more about mushrooms and the mushroom kingdom, Andrew's advice for building an incredible company culture, and the advice he'd give himself if he could go back to the start of his career, and much more. You can find the show notes and text transcript for this episode at outlieracademy.com slash 124. That's one, two, four. And you can learn more about Smallhold at smallhold.com and follow Andrew Carter on Twitter at 40, that's 40KKM. With that, let's dive into Andrew Carter's playbook. Andrew, thank you for joining me again on Outlier Academy, this time for 20 Minute Playbook. I'm excited to ask you 10 questions and dive into a little bit of what drives you and uh, try to pull some interesting thoughts. <laughs> out of your yeah, head. let's do it. So to start, can you just share a little bit of background uh, on what you're building at Smallhold and uh, you know how many stores you're at today, how people can buy the mushrooms that you produce? So Smallhold is a distributed farm growing fresh mushrooms uh, throughout the country. Uh, we grow them locally. We're certified organic, uh, really great uh, quality mushrooms you can find on shelves throughout throughout the country. Uh, we're in over 400 stores now, and so various Whole Foods, Albertsons, Banners uh, in Los Angeles. We're in uh, Lassen's and Erewhon. You can also order us online through Amazon Fresh, uh, Fresh Direct on the East Coast, uh, Misfits Market, and Perfect Produce, Good Eggs, all over the place. But Whenever you're buying our mushrooms, they're grown locally and grown in the region that they're that you're buying them in. Um, so you can always know that they're fresh and organic, um, and they'll 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 taste good. And, and I hope you enjoy them. Perfect. It's a perfect setup. Um, I want to ask the first question. I always ask is around a recent fascination. What's been intriguing you lately? What can't you stop thinking about? Can be mushroom related. Cannot be mushroom related. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it's probably a boring answer, but I uh, I just had my first child. Uh, he is nine and a half months old. Uh, his name is Oscar. Um, and beyond the fact that I like have a startup and a child, and so I can't really think about much else than that, but he is extremely fascinating. It is the craziest thing I've ever experienced in my life. Um, he looks identical to me, so it looks really, it's very weird. Um, but uh, he changes daily and uh, has teeth and like, you know, tries to communicate in different ways. And it is um, it is just the most fascinating experience of my entire life. And so I, I can't really think about much else besides that. It's a great answer. And you're actually the first person to share. To share oh, that really? <laughs> That's kind of funny. So congratulations. Um, yeah, thank you. When you think about business and leadership, when you think about, you know, uh, your role at Smallhold, what do you think of as your superpowers and how do you use those? I'm not the best at completely like eliminating my ego, but I do try to do that. I trust my team as much as I can. I sometimes jump in, um, but you know, I think that there's many different ways to get to a solution. And so I trust our team to get there. Um, I let people talk, I let people finish. I really try to um, build a team and have an actual team atmosphere um, and do that in, in my own sort of way. 
if you had to distill down your philosophy of building a company into just a few words, what would that be? You know, what comes to mind if you, if someone was to try to ask, you know, how have you built small hold or, or what are some of the, you know, principles you hold near and dear? Yeah. Like build around community. You, you want to focus on the people around you and the, and the people that you're servicing, however you're servicing them. People want everything to be scalable. And you imagine that every single person wants the same thing, but it's not true. And so you really have to focus on the communities that you're trying to reach. And the more you can build into that, the more lasting of a company and lasting of a brand you'll have. It's a great, two great principles. When you think about mentors and figures that shaped your approach, and this can be to, you know, farming to even the reason or interest and in why you wanted to create small hold, who comes to mind? And are there any favorite quotes, stories, anecdotes from them? I mean, there's so many people that have gotten me to where I am. Um, you know, I, I studied in college with a guy named uh, Professor John Todd, and he invented these things called living systems and uh, eco machines. And these are the the there are these crazy forms of ecology that allow you to filter out water and do the things that I want to do by remediation, basically really cool engineering feats. But the, one of the best ways of making a living system um, with this kind of technology is by uh, essentially dosing it with like a really icky, dirty, like water source from, uh, from another sort of area. And so, the idea is that you have this microcosm. It's like an environment that's going through its own sort of evolution internally. And then by constantly dosing it with something else, like something that's like, you know, might have some sort of invasive organism or something else like that, we'll just continue to help it evolve rather than become in some sort of like, never really be in a steady state, but it allows it to be a stronger organism, a stronger uh, ecosystem. And so that is definitely the case with ecosystems, but you can kind of think about it with anything. Like you always want to kind of shake it up or like bring different kinds of perspectives in to help different things out. Cause like you're going to get stuck in the same sort of cycle if you're not constantly rethinking any of that. Another, I mean, I, you know, I, I think about my parents a lot. Uh, my parents aren't around anymore, but both my parents worked in different startups for various reasons. But my, my mom ran an antique store um, in Los Angeles. I grew up basically in an antique store and uh, it was on Wilshire Boulevard in West LA. And she had her own way of managing community, which is I always found so amazing. There were a lot of people that like lived, like they were either homeless or just kind of like spent a lot of time on the streets that would just come in. And like most business owners like really dismissed all these people. My mom was really, really, uh, really welcoming to a lot of people because most, most of these people weren't there to mess with anything. They're just, they just lived there. Like it was, it was people just had their own things going on, which a lot of time can be pretty depressing, but most people weren't trying to steal anything or anything like that. And um, she really embraced people and like built a community around her. And I always appreciate her for that because it was like not in the mission of an antique store necessarily, but she found it really important and it helped her run her own business in her own way. Yeah. That's so cool. What, um, you know, we talked in the last interview about Fantastic Fungi, uh, this amazing film that came out it's on Netflix now that people can watch. Um, so separate from that, you know, are there books that you'd recommend for people that are interested in, in learning more about mushrooms? And then if, do you have any books that have particularly helped you as a founder? Yeah. So uh, there, the book that I recommend most people to read for mushrooms is uh, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake. Uh, it's a more recent book. Uh, it's an amazing book that covers a lot of different aspects of the mushroom industry and fungi, but really embraces the unknown. And I'm really a big fan of it. I think that it's a good gateway for most kinds of people. There's also all the Paul Stamets books. All those are very helpful if you're looking into cultivating. But I would I would really uh, start with the Merlin Sheldrake book if if you're if you're looking. Um, as far as you know, books that, that helped me as a founder, I tried reading a lot of self-help books in the beginning and I found, I found that a lot of, uh, a lot of it is so specific to the certain period of time that those were written. And it's not that you shouldn't listen to any of them, but even me as a founder, like we still have so much, so far to go, but like I, people ask me for advice and I'm like, look, like 
me fundraising a year ago is like completely different different fundraising right now. And like, whatever I went through like two months ago is going to be different in two months. And so like, I can give you my perspective, but everyone's adventure is so different. And it took me a long time to really think that because I was reading these things and being like, oh, I have to run my company like this. I listen to certain podcasts and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think, I think mainly just try to people trying to create their own adventure and, and it's really important in this space. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice and you're totally right. I mean, there's so many books that you read that are, I don't know, just, you have to always read them through the lens of like, what's useful for me. And you're trying to find those tidbits in the book and you're kind of discarding with everything else. And in that way, it seems somewhat wasteful <laughs> because you might read an entire book and take away maybe two ideas. Um, but you know, I, I totally sympathize with that. And I also love people who, when you ask them for advice, frame it as, well, let me give you my perspective as opposed to like, here's the one answer. Um, so that's nice. What tiny habit or practice has had the biggest positive impact on your life? With people, it's like definitely try, like letting people finish. Um, I'm not the most like crazy like interrupter or anything like that in general, but but like really like letting people finish their thought and communicating and sure like it might take a little bit longer, but it like gives people time um, to talk and to explain themselves. People, it helps people get their thoughts out, but then it also is just helps your own relationship. This might seem obvious, but like I'm around tons of people and lots of people don't do that. Like people just want to get their thought across as fast as possible. And that's not the best way to do it, in my opinion. And it's really helped me with my management of, of the people around me and, and our own team. I love that. Last question. Um, if you could go back to the start of your career and whisper some words of advice, words of encouragement, uh, a reminder in your ear, what would you tell your younger self? Uh, I would make sure that I am like building lasting relationships with people. You know, I eventually became a consultant before Smallhold. And for me, consulting was basically just knowing the right people to call. Like I, I, I could do, I could, I could be good if I needed to do things, but I basically just had a bunch of specialists that I was close with that I could call and I still have those people. Um, and I think that that's important for anyone, like in any of these businesses, you can be a consultant or you can be a business owner, you can just work for, you can work for a place. Um, but having that network and keeping up with everyone, don't be like a ladder climber or whatever, but like, you never know what people are going to do. I mean, we have, like I have friends of mine that are I went to middle school with that now work at large funds and stuff. And so, um, you know, try to keep up with people and, uh, and like I was okay at it, but I could have been much better. And so I, I would tell myself to just really try to keep those relationships going. Yeah. I love that advice. It's a perfect note to end on. Thank you so much for the time, Andrew. I really appreciate you coming back on. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening. You can find the show notes and text transcript for this episode at outlieracademy.com slash 124. It's one, two, four. For more from Andrew Carter, listen to episode 122, where he joins me on our Outlier Founder Series to go deep on Smallhold, which is upending the food industry by growing their mushrooms in Michelin star rated restaurants and grocery stores and through their network of on-site and macro farms. In that episode, we cover the wild world of mushrooms, from the Netflix documentary Fantastic Fungi to the book Entangled Life to Mushroom People. We go deep on how mushrooms work, why most of us have only eaten a single variety of mushroom our entire lives, and why we should all be eating more mushrooms. Andrew covers why the modern food industry is broken, from why most apples you eat are nearly a year old, to why fish sold in the U.S., even if it's caught in the States, is sent to China to be processed and then back to the U.S. to be sold. We cover the technology behind Smallhold, from the incredible number of sensors embedded into their farms to how much data they crunch every day to grow incredible mushrooms reliably 24-7, 365. And all of the lessons Andrew has learned along the way, from how they built a new direct-to-consumer side of their business during the pandemic to how they've iterated and refined their business model over the years. For more on Smallhold, listen to episode 122 or visit outlieracademy.com slash 122. You can find videos of all of our interviews on YouTube at youtube.com slash Outlier Academy. On our channel, you'll find all of our full-length interviews as well as our favorite short clips from every episode, including this one. So make sure to subscribe. We post new videos and clips every single week. And if you haven't already, follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn under the handle Outlier Academy. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you right here with a brand new episode next Friday.